May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, for you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Good morning, Cathedral Church. Jesus had just told his disciples to be on their guard against causing someone else to stumble. For it was better, he said, to be thrown into the sea with a millstone around their neck than to do such a thing. As if that warning was not enough, then Jesus told them that if someone sins against them, even if, if they do so seven times in a single day, they are to forgive them over and over and over again. Given the demanding mandates not to speak of the other conditions that Jesus said were necessary for following him, like leaving family and giving up all of their possessions, it is no wonder that the disciples asked Jesus to increase our faith, for they feel unequal to the task, the task that following Jesus requires. So on the surface, it seems like a reasonable and benign request for what could be wrong with asking for more faith, especially if you are asking in order to do what Jesus asks of you. Yet, for Jesus, the request is a source of irritation, for in making the request, it seems that the disciples simply did not get it. They did not get the nature of faith itself. And so instead of granting them more faith, Jesus responds by saying, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, then you can say to a mulberry tree, be uprooted and plant it in the sea, and it will obey. Now, the Greek here suggests not a conditional clause which implies if only the slaves had the faith of a mustard seed. Instead, it suggests that Jesus is rejecting the very notion that they have too little faith, and instead is saying, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, and you do indeed, then you have faith enough. Thus, it is not a matter of increasing their faith. Rather, it is a matter of appreciating the faith they have. For this faith will allow them to root up a mulberry tree, or as the Gospel of Mark says, move a mountain. And so it is that the disciples' lack of faith is not the problem. It is rather their lack of understanding the faith that they have, regardless of how minuscule that faith might seem. So it is that through the mustard seed saying, Jesus is not so much scolding them for their lack of faith as he is opening them up to a new understanding of the power of faith they possess. And so, what is it about faith that is always enough, enough even to uproot a mulberry tree and throw it into the sea? What is it about faith? First and foremost, faith is about fortitude, fortitude. The fact that one claims to have faith at all means that one has the fortitude, as in the strength, to get through not only the everyday challenges of life, but to also meet the challenges of a life of following Jesus. For here's the thing about faith. Faith is not about right belief. It's not about regarding something as true even when we cannot readily prove it to be so. Instead, he indeed, that highly touted verse from Hebrew that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, even that does not capture the nature of faith. For that points to an attitude of mind and heart that is human and really says nothing about God or Jesus for that matter. The point is 
that faith is not about what we are prepared to believe or willing to accept without evidence. Rather, faith is about a response, our response to God. For faith is only possible because God has acted first. That is, God has initiated a relationship with us, a relationship of being an active presence in our world, indeed, in our very lives. For this is a presence, a presence that is creative, always creating for us new possibilities for living, even in the midst of death. And it is a presence that is saving, saving us always from our very sinful selves. And it is a presence that is sustaining, sustaining us through the very hardships, fears, and doubts of our living. Indeed, it is the very loving presence of God that has been supremely revealed to us in the life and ministry of Jesus. Our faith is a response to that presence. For it is an affirmation of the fact that our God is with us, making and creating ways out of no way so that we can live, liberating and saving us from our sins so that we can become better, as well as sustaining and enlivening us with the power to push through all of life's many challenges. To claim then to have faith at all is nothing less than an acknowledgement that we indeed possess the fortitude, the fortitude to meet the demands of following Jesus. Because in the end, our faith is not about us and what we can do. It is about God and what God can do. And thus, all impossibility of following Jesus is uprooted. And so it is not a matter of increasing our faith. Rather, it is a matter of trusting in the faith we have which means trusting that with the presence of God in our lives, all things are possible. Increase our faith, the disciples asked. But Jesus did not, because they were asking for that which they did not need. They needed not increase, but trust. And so what is it about faith that is always enough? It is about the fortitude that is God's presence. And it is about the freedom that is God's vision. Cathedral Church, in as much as faith signals God's relationship to us and ours to God, it is freeing. For it frees us from being constrained by human expectations and aspirations for our world, thereby opening us up to God's promises and hopes for our future. You put another way, Faith frees us to see the world the way God sees it. That is not the way it is, or even the way in which we might improve it, but rather the way it is going to be and the way in which God is going to set it right. Paul puts it this way in his letter to the Corinthians. Faith, he says, allows us to fix our eyes not on the seen that is temporary, but on the unseen that is eternal that we have faith at all means that we have that which frees us and frees us from seeing the world with our limited vision of earthly possibilities and frees us to see it through the unlimited vision of God's heaven. This is the vision of the world that Jesus calls us into, a vision of God's kingdom where the cruelty, callousness, and indeed violence of injustice is not just eased, but is forever uprooted from our earth. And so what is it about faith? It is about the freedom to see the world, to see our future as God sees it. Increase our faith, the disciples asked. But Jesus did not, for it was not an increase of faith, but the vision of faith that they needed. And this brings us to a final aspect of what faith is all about. For inasmuch as faith is about a response to God, it is about faithfulness. Church, faith is not static. It is not an end in itself. Rather, faith is dynamic, and thus it is the beginning, 
the beginning of living, living as followers of Jesus in the world. Inasmuch as faith is a response to God that is present with us, it is about faithfulness to that God, which means nothing less than our not bowing and bending to the will of humans or capitulating or compromising with the ways of the world. Rather, faithfulness is about obeying and yielding to the will of God and being captivated by and committed to the ways of God's heaven. In church, because we have faith, we indeed have the fortitude and the freedom that is needed for us to be faithful faithful to the selfless, self-sacrificing, and sympathetic ministry that God, that Jesus calls us into, and thus faithful enough to uproot from ourselves the selfish, self-centered, and self-righteous ways of our world. Increase our faith, the disciples asked, but Jesus did not, for they needed not an increase of faith, but rather they needed to live in to the very faith they had. What is this thing of faith all about? It is about the fortitude it, it gives us and provides for us to put one foot in front of the other and thus to meet the challenges that are ever before us. What is this thing of faith about? It's about the freedom it reveals, the freedom it reveals for us to move toward a future that we cannot see but that God is fashioning for us. And it is about the faithfulness, the faithfulness to do what God would have us to do. And so this brings us to that problematic parable on slavery with which Jesus caps off his disciples' requests for an increase of faith. To be sure, stories about masters and slaves are ethically problematic for us as we hear it in our own context that suffers from the legacy of slavery. We should know, however, that in the world of Jesus, slavery was not as it was for us in our world. For a slave in Jesus' time was considered human, not chattel, and thus a slave was not thought of as property and belonging to another. Rather, a slave was always considered sacred and always considered belonging only to God. And so it is that Jesus was indeed able to refer to slavery in order to illuminate or to get across to his disciples what it was about faith that was always faith enough. For faith was about being in service to God and to God's kingdom. And thus Jesus wanted to remind them that faith brings its own rewards for it is about nothing less than our relationship to a God who has initiated a relationship with us. But with that said, Jesus' parable does indeed take me back to the slavery of our history. Particularly, it takes me back to the faith of the enslaved. For theirs was a faith crafted and proclaimed, not when all was well in our world or well in their lives, for it was a time when their very sacred humanity was brutally scorned, betrayed, and indeed denied. Yet, yet, they knew they had faith enough faith enough to make it through the tyranny and hardship of their days. And so they proclaimed in song, we've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. Oh, even though many would live, be born, and die in bondage, they still knew that with the eyes of faith, they would someday be free. And so they sang, oh, freedom. Oh, freedom, oh, freedom over me. Before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. And even though those who would enslave them called themselves Christian and whipped and beat them in the name of Jesus, the enslaved remained faithful to the ways of their Jesus. And so they gave us that song that goes, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, yes, 
a legacy of slavery that is for us to claim, is the legacy of a faith, a faith of fortitude, a faith of freedom, a faith of faithfulness, the faith of Jesus Christ that was good enough for the enslaved, good enough to uproot the mulberry tree of slavery from our earth and toss it into the sea. It was good enough for them. And so it should be good enough for us. Increase our faith, the disciples said. If you have the faith of a mustard seed, then you have faith enough to uproot the mulberry trees of your living and toss them in the sea. Amen.